Okay, today I've got the FN57. Um, we're going to be doing another complete disassembly. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to start with a uh, field strip. Of course, our gun is empty. So we're just going to start by pulling the slide back a little bit. Take your button here, push it out inwards, and just kind of push forward and lift it off the frame. So we'll set the side off to the slide, slide off to the side. We'll take out the barrel, so just pulling out the spring. Okay, so now you have the slide itself, and if you look down in here, you'll see what you have. So you have, of course, your firing pin block, um, which is the only part of the gun we won't be removing, and I'll show you why when we get there. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is this plastic polymer um, outer cover has to come off in the inner metal frame or the slide has to come out in order to start removing any parts so the first thing you're going to want to do is drive out your um, pin now let me see here these pins most of the pins that are in this 5.7 are ridged steel pins so they come out one way at least it's best for them to come out one way. So pay attention to which way I run these out because like these two come out from the left to right. This one comes out right to left. You know, these come out obviously right to left. This one comes out um, left to right. And I'll show you why here in a second. But So we'll start off by removing this pin. It is kind of a rolled, rounded pin. It is steel. Um, so if you have a cupped punch like this, you could get... You could start it with if you want, if it's big enough. This one's not really big enough, but it seemed to do a pretty good job on my pre-disassembly. Um, the punch I prefer to use. Um, so I'm going to get it started, and then I'll finish it with this punch here. Okay, so you can see how that punch is ridged. Lights drowning out my focus, but so all the pins are ridged like that. They are steel, which is good. So if they were plastic, I'd say you might worry a little bit more about taking this in and out a bunch or doing the disassembly a bunch. But since they're steel, um, they're going to hold up a lot longer. You don't have to do this, but I do it on some guns. It just depends what I'm doing. If I'm just trying to keep all the pins together, especially when they're bi-directionals and they have to be in certain ways. So I just, I do it with Smith revolvers and all the main revolvers and stuff. I usually draw out a diagram and then poke them where they go. But I just kind of wrote down um, where they go. So this is the first middle spring in front of the, um, well, this isn't, this is for the frame. The slide's obvious, but. So I'm going to put that into a bowl here slide parts so once you've done that you have to remove the rear sight base or not the base but the rear sight um, assembly here at the top so the first thing you have to do is drive out this roll pin in the sight so we're gonna get a small punch here we're gonna set it in here this block is not the best for this So once we've done that, we're going to unscrew the elevation screw here all the way out. Now when you do this, keep your finger, if you look down in here, um, need more rear lighting instead of front lighting. Um, it's hard to see, but there's two springs, obviously, that push this, help push the side up. So after I get it to a certain, you can see if I push down on them, they spring back up. So I'm going to unscrew it. It's going to click for a while because it's adjusting the elevation right now. 
eventually the clicks will stop. So now you're actually unscrewing from the base. Once you get it up, you can pull off the sight. You can see one uh, spring stayed in the sight and the other one went with the base here. So I'm just going to put those back in there. You sit them there like that, and you have your actual screw. All right, so now that leaves where you can push out the frame from the, the slide from the bottom. Now, I believe some of the older models, you could do it without having to remove that, but since this the way it sits, um, it's easier to just take it off. So once you've done that, now, let's see, now you can remove the metal insert. So what you're going to do is just start pushing on the base down here of the sights. Start pushing it down. You can see where it locks in here in the front. The metal tab does. So once you get it out, you can start to pull it down and out. And then you're done with the, the plastic. Um, one thing... Now, it shouldn't have went flying, but um, if you're pre-watching this, just be mindful of the spring that's on the loaded chamber indicator. Um, it can go. It's it's usually not under enough pressure to go flying off, but you do. It is one you can end up dropping on the table and not noticing. So if you look right here, it's a spring. Um, so we'll put that up here. Now that's the loaded chamber indicator. So we're just going to pull that out. It goes in the frame. Spring goes on. Once the plastic slides on, it push, pushes its tension down. So when the cartridge gets into the breech face, it pushes up and sticks out of the, the plastic on the slide. So it gives you a little indicator there. Um, next, you have the extractor right here with the extractor retainer pin right here. You're just going to push down on that extractor in the spring, grab that pin, pull that pin out, slowly let off of the extractor. Take the extractor and its spring out, and put those off to the side. From there, um, you can remove the, um, the firing pin itself. So you're gonna take this pin out here it's, um, it's non-directional, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter which way it comes out. But we're just going to push that pin out. And then we're going to push down on the firing pin block. And it's not going to fly out. It's going. You're going to have to uh, give a little push down on the firing pin block. And then just give it a little push out. Take it, it's a little stiff because it sits on back in here where it gets kind of stuck on there um, so that's the firing pin hammer or uh, yeah firing pin so that <clears throat> that's as, as far as I'm gonna go on this assembly unfortunately I hate to not do completes um, you know minus sights but the firing pin block I'll get a light so you can see it goes down in you see me pushing on it Well, if you look right underneath, that's on this side, that sight base, you see that spring? That's what's pushing backwards, back down onto it. So that rear sight base has to be removed. Um, and that's just not something I want to do on a, just, just to remove the firing pin block. Once you remove that, um, you can uh, take remove the spring, remove the firing pin block in here. You're done, so if you really want to get down in there and do that, you can, but it, um, it can all be cleaned from right here with a little uh, little cleaner and some blow blow duster and you know, Q-tips, brushes, whatever you want to use. So That is the FN57 slide completely disassembled. Yeah, let's put this up there. I'm kind of working from the sides. So I don't bump my camera. Because there's going to be some parts in here that are a little tricky, uh, but not terrible. It's just a matter of doing certain ones and, and, and finding the right order 
um, to put them back in. Cause some things they go back together, but it, some things have weird orders. The way I, fi I found out to do it, I think the best way. I've only put it un undisassembled it and put it back together once. Um, so I'm gonna try to remember the best way of doing it. Now, so the first thing I'm gonna start with um, up front is going to be the the block, the locking block. Not really the locking block, but the takedown lever, I guess. So the right here, this lever here, this spring. So what you're going to do is, like I said before, you're going to drive this pin out first. And that's going to allow that spring there to decompress. This one is uh, left to right. There's that one. So, made a road on here. Just gonna put that in there, even though a lot of them are the same. I just like to keep everything exact. And you can see my punch is resting on that spring, so I can just pull that out and let it let it fall forward. It's not gonna fly anywhere. So next we can remove um, this pin down here that's actually holding that um, release in place. So we're going to do the exact same thing, left to right. So now once we've done that, we can remove by pulling that out. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Get another bowl here for some later. I love these little bowls. <clears throat> Talked about them before. If you can get them, I got them from Cornwell because they show up at my work. But you can get them online. Um, I forget who actually makes them. Easy Red, I believe, makes them for uh, all the big brands like this. Like 25 bucks. They're all magnetic. But they're pretty cool. I like how they pop up and down. Whatever. So let's get back to this. Um, so once you've done that, you can pull out the spring. Just take it out. And then you can take out the lever itself by rotating this up and popping it out. So that's that. I'm trying to readjust my lighting, see if I can get a little bit better. I don't have anything steeled here to mount this to, so. Um, let's just try it without it, because that kind of almost is drowning me out. Let me see which is better. Yeah, we'll use this light as a backup, or we'll turn it down a little bit. Yeah, it's a little better. We can use it later for if we need to. Okay, so we um we have the safety, which I'm going to do. Let's see, I believe I'm going to do that last. I can't remember how I did it before, but the safety, um, the levers on the tabs on the side are pinned, and there's no um uh, like blank hole or anything where you can drive that pin out. So what I'm gonna have to do is when I take out this the trigger. I'm going to reverse it. You have to push down on a plunger, and then I'll drive this pin out from here, from down, and then we'll be able to remove this side and pull it out. Um, so let's get on to the rest of it. Um, we'll remove. <coughs> we can go ahead and remove the sear and everything right now, actually. Oh. So um, this pin here is removed from right to left obviously it's too small to go out the other side um so what you're going to do drive that that pin out now what you're going to want to remember first though is that you have your slide lock and the slide lock spring is right in between the sear block and the um the slide lock so it's not 
in between the frame and the slide locks between the it's hard to see it's down in there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get in there and i'm going to lift it up because this pin is grooved so that that pin sits on top of it and it keeps it in there so that's about the only thing holding it in right now if i push on it it's not going to come out so i'm going to lift that spring up ever so slightly and start pushing that pin out with my fingernail and then use a punch to hopefully get it the rest of the way yeah, grab the wrong one That's all you gotta do there. And then we'll pull that punch out. Let's see. Um, from there, you can actually remove the sear housing and everything. So what you're just gonna wanna do is just pull up. Now what I do is keep my hand over the left side where the um, firing pin block lever is. We're just going to keep my hot thumb over here and then just kind of rotate, pull it out this towards the front because that pin it's not pinned through it's just um cut out for it and keeps it in place it's actually it doesn't really do much besides the uh trigger lock pin but anyways so now that i've taken it out get a good glimpse of it we'll take it apart here in a minute so i'm just going to put it off here in my bowl and we'll finish up the frame then we'll do the sear cage and um, finish up here so one thing i will um, rec show you is that before um your trigger bar might look different than mine i should have reset it um to the right place but mine i basically disabled the magazine disconnect on this because i magazine disconnects are stupid um in my opinion i know some people like them but um so i've disassembled it or disengaged it however so basically let me see if i can get uh, my light to show and get you a pointer so you have obviously the the trigger bar let me zoom in there we go so you have the trigger bar and then you have this tensioned piece of spring steel that's sitting right here well normally that is sitting in the longer pointer. This groove here in the plastic. You see that? So this is usually down here, which in turn, when there's no magazine in it, pushes down on the trigger bar. When you put a magazine in, it raises it up. So it can fire. But I don't like magazine disconnects. And I've also seen multiple issues of these mags um, not activating it. Because they, they lose just a little bit on their lips. And they won't engage it. It's not like I use this as a defense weapon. But it's just annoying. So even on top of not liking magazine disconnects. That was another burner for me to, to uh, swap it over. So, now the trigger bar, I'll show you since it was, it just kind of fell up. It just sits down in here. And we'll put it, obviously put it back in there later, but it goes kind of like that back in my back. But, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that up. And I'm going to start pulling it. Well, first, let's uh, remove the magazine um, release. So it has this uh, Genius Magazine release that I just have had some issues I've seen before with bullets not seated in the magazine correctly and they pull this out and the magazine release ends up falling out. Um, so yeah, that's just a, I forget exactly what, they, what this spring's called, but just a spring, both sides, slides down in there and uh, puts tension on one side of the magazine or, or the other so if you are going to swap your magazine release to the left hand side this is how you'll do it i just kind of put that out of the way and i'll just lift it out of there I'm just going to be careful just pull it up out like that the magazine release is now free to come out so if you wanted to flip it around 
and put it back put it back in the other way. You know, it's actually gotta go in the way that it's I think. I think that was right. In there. So once you do that, if you want to swap it around and then just get something nice and push that down in there until it clicks. But we're gonna take it out for now. So if that's how you swap it, that's how you do it. If, if you are swapping it, that's how you do it. Um, going to pull that the rest of the way out so it's out of the way of my trigger bar. That's what that looks like. Hopefully everything's getting seen here. Um, apologize if it's not, but I wanted to get a little closer. Um, so now the trigger bar, what I do is see it, it, it only tensions when you have the trigger bar down. So I'm just going to remove the trigger pin. Um, which comes out from uh, yeah the left uh, the right side. So I want to take it out this way, unlike the other two pins. So I'm just going to drive it out real fast. And then I'll lift up my trigger bar through here and just you could probably work it out but I don't I'm just going to go ahead and push this pin out and let the trigger bar come off the spring return spring and the trigger itself just fall out of the bottom of the gun Okay, so, whoa, why are you red? Why is my thing red? Showing me red. Hopefully I'm not running out of space. Um, if I do, I'll cut and re-edit, so. Okay, um, next we'll remove the, the uh, slide lock and everything. So this just kind of slides around in there now. And this trigger, this spring that's in here, so it goes behind this pin, let me show you, I'll just take this pin out real fast. Oh wait, no I'm not, sorry. Don't do that. I'm going to get my screwdriver and I'm going to start lifting that spring up. Get it out of the way of my slide lock. And then I'll slowly pull it up and out of the back. So it doesn't, it's not in there very much good at all. So it does, too many punches. It sits behind this trigger pin like this, and in that groove, and it also keeps it from falling out. And then once you have the slide lock in there, it sits in the middle, and then that pin that holds the sear block in keeps it tensioned down. So um, that's how that all works there. That's how you get it out. Um, so next would be taking the actual block off itself. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Um, I don't know how many times I'd recommend doing this because I'll show you. Um, it's just pressed on there. So what I'm going to do is get a very small flathead and I'm going to go behind it. I'm going to lift it off there. A little bit and then get in from this top side and do it again just gonna pop it off there and then the trigger bar will come out just like that or the whatever firing pin block no come on now slide lock and that's how it's gonna go back on you can see it's just got a hole cut out and it just pops on there so yeah eventually that's gonna wear out if you do this a bunch, so I wouldn't recommend that. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see my parts somewhat separated. All right, so now the safety, the last thing in the gun to remove. So what you're gonna do is get you a something, a pick. 
something long, whatever you can get in. So obviously, this has got a spring detent. You can click, you can hear it when you open it. When you open, turn it, you know, click to activate the safety on. And if you look down in, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Technical difficulties. Yeah, this is where I wish I was a good editor. I just made some loud crash animation or something. Um, so pretty right here. Below this is just a small spring and plunger that's pushing up on this. And it's, this is ridged here on the bottom, so it keeps it what gives it its click and what holds it in place. So, hopefully, let me see if I can show you again. It's hard to show again, see, but you can see it right, yeah, right there. Let me zoom in. Zoom in. Right there. A little plunger I can push it down by so what I'll do is I'm going to push down on that plunger and then rotate the lever I got my pick on it just a little bit I'm gonna rotate my lever down it could go up it's just gonna take longer um, like that so now the detent is being pushed all the way down. And, but what that does is I'm gonna keep rotating it until I, you see that hole open up right here. That means I also have another hole, the original hole, right here on the back side. Oh God, the focus is terrible. See it right back there, and then the one up here, or towards the front right there. So, what I'm gonna do is I've used a, uh, a 16th punch that I've ground down. I've used it for other guns, um, but this one works perfect. I had to I modify it a little bit more, um, and it's already bent from using it on a, something. I forget what. Maybe that can. I could, um, but basically, I'm going to get this in the ideal position to where I can still manage to get the punch on it, but that pin will still be able to drive out. I'm going to take it. Pop it out. Just make sure. I didn't mean to go all the way, but so I didn't lose it. It's right there. And now, this left, um, right side is free, and I can just start to kind of pull it and wiggle it out of there. Boom. So now I've done that. I'm going to slowly start pushing this side out, or just, once I get a hold of it, start pulling it out. But you want to make sure that you keep your thumb over that, um, detent you might have to uh yeah you're gonna have to push it down again but now it's pretty open just make sure you don't let it go flying and let it back up while i do that I'm just gonna pull that plunger out of there. Oh man. It's getting in the way of me taking out the lever all the way, so let me just pull that, at least the plunger. And the spring. Pull it out. Right there. Oops. 
Okay. There. Now it's out. So, that is the 5.7 completely disassembled, except for the magazine, um, or the uh, firing pin block, like I said before. So, <sighs> hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, have fun putting it back together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the part I don't want to do. Taking it apart's easy. It's getting it back together. That's uh, a little tough, but I lied. I've mean, got too much crap on my bench here. Too many punches and doohickeys. Okay, so now we're going to disassemble the uh, sear block. Um, we did this once, but it was off camera, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put it all back together for you. So, so it's going to sit like this um, when you take it out of the gun. So first thing you can do is just remove the uh, firing pin block lifter. And it just pretty much, you can just grab it. Oop. Let it pop off there. You kind of grab the spring and just lift it off. But, so you'll have two pieces there. I'm just going to put them all right here because we'll be right back at it. And then you have the sear spring. So it just kind of lifts off its stud like that. Just kind of pull it off there. And then unhook it from the sear. And then the actual sear itself has a little nub that pops out just like that. That's what the sear spring sits on. And it just kind of just sits in there. And then the sear comes out. So next you have the hammer and its spring. So what I do, um, these are headed pins so they can only come out the opposite side so where it's not milled at as you can see do it from this side and you can take out this bottom one first if you want but I realize it's just a little it's the same just to go ahead and pop that pin out keep your thumb over everything pull your punch out and let it go done you ain't fiddling with nothing um, putting it back together is where it'll where we'll learn something so this bottom pin here that's still in there we're just going to push it out and then we're going to put the hammer so now we're into disassembly mode we're going to put the hammer back into the sear block so we're going to go like this Ejector first, hammer, part that hits, <laughs> put it in there, into the second hole up, go ahead and grab your big headed pin, pin it from this side here, get it started, and now you grab the spring, it's going to go in like this, it doesn't matter um, actually, it can only go in, it's the same both ways. Slide it through. Make sure you get your pin all the way through. Like that. And then... Oh, the light died. Oh man, that's the, the main one. Then we're going to flip it like this. Look at it like this. Wait a minute. What am I? Something's not right. Yeah. Spring this spring back. So this spring rests in a groove right there on the hammer. If you can see it, it's actually pinned. It comes out. It's just a ball roller, a rolly. And that spring sits on it like that. So this is the way you want it right now. Hammer down there. Like that. And I'm going to push this down. I'm going to go ahead and get this pin ready. This headed pin is going to go in through the left side. And I'm going to get my screwdriver. Um, or maybe even this. kind of like this tool. Oh, no, it's not spread everywhere enough. I'm going to 
grab that spring and push down on it as best I can. Push it forward. And while I do that, I'm going to slide this pin. See, this is getting in my way. Hopefully that got on camera again. Um, I swear if it didn't, it's going to be the second time I wasn't watching it. But basically, once you have it in there, push that spring down, slide that pin through so it sits on that pin. And this is what it'll look like at the end. You should be able to take it, pull the hammer back, and it have forward tension. So next we have, um, we're going to go ahead and put the, disc, the sear back in. We're going to take the sear, slide it up in like that. We're going to grab that little stud. Put it on. We're going to grab the sear spring. We're going to hook it on like this. We're going to hook in there. Then this is going to rotate up and up and onto that stud. So when it's back in the gun, this pushes against the plastic. So it locks it in place. And then we'll take the firing pin block lifter, grab it like this. Take this spring, short leg is going to go on top, it's going to go underneath that little lip on the lifter itself, and then you're going to take your thumb and just kind of hold the spring down at the, at the wind, grab the other piece with your fingernail if you can, and I'm just going to set it down on that stud right there, this is a close, one closest to the sear block, and it's going to... Lift that spring up, get it on that stud, oops, it didn't do it, stay in there so it kind of wants to pop out but that spring goes behind this other spring on the sear on that sear stud so it sits behind it so it looks like that when it's done it's just sitting up on the back of it so try to keep that together it likes to pop off so I'm just gonna put it over here and we'll zoom back out and decide where I want to start. Um, let's see here. Hmm, what I want to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the magazine release. Uh, one thing I didn't show you. Yeah, that sear. Or the, not the sear. That spring is right here. I just have it kind of sits, and if yours is actually down and in that slot in the middle, but I'm gonna have mine sitting on top because I like the disconnect off. So you want know, if you want to take it for your dis disconnect, you can do it without ever disassembling the gun. You just get something down in there, pop it out of that groove, and lift it up on top. And that's uh. 100% safe. It's the, it's the way to do it. Um, there's other another way too, but that's the easy way. Um, so now that we've done that, I'm going to put... I think I want to put the magazine release back in, but I can't... 
Mm, I feel like it blocks, something blocks it there. No, let's go ahead and put the magazine release back in. Screw it. Um, so we'll grab our magazine release, whichever side you're putting it back in. It's going to go in from the opposite. Let's see, look, it just fell right out, didn't you? Falls out because it's not sitting in that groove. So watch that. Right, put that back in in a minute. But So it'll go in like this from the opposite side. Once I have it in there, whichever way I want, I'm going to grab my, what I use, my forceps. And I'm going to compress this spring. And it goes in with the hump forward. Not backwards. Forwards. And you're just going to grab it with whatever you can. A pair of needle nose or something. But, and compress that spring down in there. It's going to slide down into the slot. Once you get it close to the slot, go ahead and start pushing it with your finger. And launch it across the room. It's hard to see down in there. I got it. Let's try that again. See? It's where we don't edit stuff. You see you see all the, the stuff that we actually uh, go through. I don't care who you are. So if you've done that once or twice. We've done a lot out of guns. Let's hopefully not do it again though. I can't see down in there now. There we go. Now I've got it in there. I'm going to make sure the magazine release is lined up perfect. I'm going to push it down. Push it down until it clicks into place. And, uh... Okay. Alright. So that works. Hopefully you got that. Hopefully you got a laugh out of that, but... It happens. Okay, next, because we got a lot to do and this video is getting long already, so we're at 40 minutes so far. Um, and this is where things start have to play in a certain way, so you know, i got to remember how I did everything um, in the right direction that makes it the easiest possible. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is put... Let's see, sear would be one of the last things. I think I'll go ahead and put the trigger bar in, and the trigger. But first, I'm going to put the safety in. So let's go ahead and knock the safety out real quick, because it's easy. So I'll grab the safety. The safety plunger. little bitty roll pin I'm going to put it up there and then the other side I, hope I'm, I think I did this one of the last steps before but it doesn't really matter I feel like it's going to mess with my trigger when I try to go to put it in so actually let's hold off on that hopefully you're not watching this video in real time so cut let's go do something else let's put the trigger bar back in and we can we can always put that safety in later. It'll be one of the last things. So what you'll do, and I think this is where it'll mess with that magazine release is gonna mess me up, is I'm gonna go ahead and get the trigger bar. It's gonna go like this. And your spring is gonna go basically I'm gonna pin it a little bit stick the spring in there long leg down Just capture that spring a little bit pull it back enough to get that bar in there I'm gonna lift the bar up please see what I'm doing I'm gonna lift the bar up and out of the way and I'm gonna stick the pin through like that and now when I push it down on that trigger bar it's getting it's tension just like that even it up with the pin 
want it even on both sides. Oh, okay. And now, this seems like too much tension. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and there's something else you seen, right? I know it is, but it just doesn't feel right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the trigger down in there. because the magazine release is on my way now. Um, let's see which will be easier. Pulling this apart. Or doing it the other way. So the magazine release is hindering my... putting it back in there. I don't want to jam it past it. But you might be able to... Yeah, you can just pop it down past the magazine release. It's not going to hurt anything. Didn't take any real force. So now I will go ahead and pin that. So let's grab whatever pin, trigger pin, which goes in from the left side. So I'm going to get it up where it needs to be. Look through my hole here. Start pushing it through. Now you want to make sure that the this here, it's got its cut out there. Your uh, magazine disconnect spring make sure it's lined up in the hole or over the hole when you push it through so you don't let me see where it's at push it Now, when you're having, when you have it in the middle slot, like it's supposed to be, it won't give you this much trouble. Let me make sure it's... Got that. Got that pin through there. this because it's on top now. Yep, it's not going to matter until the safety's in there. So, yeah, with that, with the, since I have it up, the, the, the center is not putting tension on it, so it's not going to keep it down. And since it's not fully Pinned, it's gonna want to pop back out till I put the safety in there. That's right. Oh, so we'll um, we'll leave it in there for now because it's it's in the right. It's where it needs to be, and then we'll mess with that later. Um, so now we'll put the trigger bar. It's gonna push it down. Now it'll probably pop back out, but we'll pull it forward, and it sits in a groove right there in the back. If I pull on the trigger, it'll lift out of there, but. Stupid magazine disconnect. There's no way to put it in there. Um, there we go. Just like that. Now it'll end up flying out again. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, safety detent in since that's giving me trouble. So what I'm going to do... Okay, so let's go ahead and put the magazine or the safety back in. So we'll grab our plunger and spring. Found it now. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it down into that hole. Okay. So 
So now I'm going to go ahead and get the left side ready. Start sticking it through and then I'm going to grab my something to push down. Now this is where you end up launching them, so be careful. To get it to a certain point, you'll have to grab your pick, whatever you were using before. Push down on it. to come out of there. Take it out and try it again here. Remember, not much editing. <laughs> uh, so I have some cuts here and there. Try not to edit because this is this is what it takes. Everybody does not think that it's super easy. You always Sometimes you get it right, and well, the first time I put this back in here, it went right in. Now this time, it's gonna give me a little hassle. We'll get it. Get these magnetic ends on my picks. going to click it in place because I want it to be upright for right now so I can drive the pin back so I'm just gonna leave it like that so the pin is upwards and I'm gonna take the pin obviously put the safety on first get it in the right spot Now we'll put that back in there. Fumbling with this little pin is hard sometimes. Okay, now. It's very soft going back in there, so you can just give it a little tap and get it to start at least, and then. Finish it off. Use a bigger push. Hold it a little close to me so if it's off camera, I'm sorry. There we go. I'm just gonna make sure she's through and not gonna um, protrude or get hung up. So. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. So now once I've done that, and that's back together, I can go ahead and rotate it back. So now it catches and the safety works. So pull the trigger. Doesn't want to move. Now it does. Okay. Put it down in there like that. All right, move the... Work here a little bit. We're still not even to the, the hardest part. Um, it's really all that firing, the safety spring, or the trigger lock, slide lock. Okay, so I'm going to take now my, I believe, this is where I got to remember which way I did it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my this spring for the slide lock. 
going to put it in this slot down here. So when the pin is in there, it kind of goes in and then down. And that's kind of what I'm going to do. And I'm going to push it down in there. And then I'm going to put the slide lock in there too under it or over on top of it so I'm going to drop it down in there like that and I'm not going to push it down yet because I'll once I get this pin through I'll be able to push it down so it seats and it sits on that um, spring or it sits on the, the ribs in the pin these right here but I don't want to put this through yet because the sear cage is hard to get back in. Even though when I took it out, it just pulled off there. I'll show you why it's not, and it can be it can cause um, a bunch of problems if you if you don't. So you know, normally you'd think, all right, let's just uh, throw that pin in. Let's just check this out. Let's just slap it. Boom, boom, down in there. Shit, we're good to go. Hold it in place. Sure, looks like it pulls. Well, it doesn't, so don't do that. I'll show you why. That spring, the one that's just right here, out the back, it has to be rested against the rear of the frame right here in an upwards motion. So when I put this back in, I have to tension that spring down. So I'm gonna be putting it against the back of the slide of the frame like that and pushing down and keeping it and then I'll slide that pin through that's why I do it like this because if not it's gonna deadlock the um, yeah it could cause a few different issues but um, it's gonna usually probably lock up the trigger so I'm gonna try so I'm putting that all back down in there now I'm going going for hope here but you can see where I've got that spring up I'm gonna push it and make sure that it stays up and you know where I can where I can see it. And once I do that, I'm gonna push it down. I'm gonna grab this pin. I'm gonna look through the hole and hopefully we're somewhat lined up. I don't think that spring's in my way, but it's hard for me to see through the hole here. Okay, so I got that part way through. So now I've got it through the back of the sear. And I'm going to look through this way. It's hard to see, but I'm just going to get it all lined up. You might have to, you're going to have to play with it. You're going to have to push down and back. So you have to be able to look through the hole and see what you need to do. Like it needs to come up. Looks dead on to me. to see down in there. Be a little brighter here. Sometimes you gotta put something in there and push down. Got it. Oh, man. So now, once I stick it through there, I want to grab a pick or something, maybe a small screwdriver, like if you can, and push down on that spring and make sure that I can't just push this pin right out. 
which I think I can right now. So, yeah, see, it'll come out. So, I want to stick something super thin down in there to push that spring down. Make sure it's locked in its little groove there. I heard it click in. So, now that spring, that pin can't be pushed out this side. And of course, this doesn't have tension yet. That's the next step. Oh, okay, we're almost home free. We're getting there. Um, that was, I think that was the hardest part. Just getting all that back together and working properly. Everything looks all right. Yeah, everything looks good. So now we're getting the, uh, put this pin through, which is my slide lock with spring. So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and start by looking through here, making sure that spring... Is up, which I don't think it is. So I'm gonna have to get a flat head and get in there and lift that spring up. So you can see it. Up enough so that this pin will clear. Let's go ahead and slide that pin through. that once I get it through and I know it's going to clear this side over here go ahead and lift that spring up just a little bit push this pin got it past it in so now that spring is sitting on the pin should be I'll make sure here Make sure that's oh nope wait. I don't think it I don't think it went in its little hole where it's supposed to. Yeah, it should have. I think it did. I think I'm just being paranoid. Yeah, okay. So it's in place too, so the slide lock now has downward tension to flip it back down like it should all right so um now we can put the lever on if you want um let's go ahead and uh, let's see which way does it go no oh yeah it's gonna go like this let's keep a hold of it from the inside maybe lift it up a little bit and then just get it your slots lined up. Get it on there and give it a good squeeze, and you'll kind of feel it click into place where the plastic's still tight. So it's still tight, which is good. So if it ever starts to loosen up, if you've done this or you do it too many times or something, just uh, get you a new one. I'm sure they're only like five bucks or something. Okay. All right, we're almost done with the frame. All right, so now we've got the slide lock back in, safety, trigger bar, everything. Um, last thing to put in the frame is going to be the takedown assembly. So you're gonna need these three items, your spring, the actual takedown um, block, and the um, lever itself. So, First thing I like to do, and you're going to need a pin too, obviously, is go ahead and take the spring. The spring's going to go in like this with the curved leg to the right of the frame. And you're just going to get it down in there. Make sure both legs go all the way down like that sits in the bottom all the way and then Go ahead and get your 
we can get the block ready. I'm gonna drop it down in there. Actually, go ahead and put the lever in first. So just put it in like this. And spin it and drop it. That way it's already in there. And then take the block. Drop it down in there. And pin it. you've done that and that will hold the spring down while you pull the spring back and drop this other pin through so what you'll do is just go ahead and get the pin in there let's go ahead and push your spring back and slide the pin in behind it like that Just go ahead and finish putting the pin through. And that is the complete frame. Um, before you put the slide together, if you want to test a few things, you can. Um, cock the hammer and make sure everything breaks like it should. good on the frame let's go ahead and put the slide back together and then do a final test I apologize for my arm being in the way on some of the shots earlier I noticed as I was putting all the clips together so I'll try to stop that it's because I'm over here on the side instead of around like I normally am but. all right so first thing we're gonna do um, I'm going to go ahead and put the striker back in, or the firing pin. So, we'll grab the firing pin itself. Once you go ahead and start sliding it in there with the lip of the firing pin down. You can see the lip on it. Go ahead and push the firing pin block all the way down and just push that in there until it catches. Now once you do that, you can test if you want. Just go ahead and push the, make sure it won't protrude right now. And then push the firing pin block in and make sure it does protrude so you know it's in there correctly. Um, from there, you can go ahead and pin that. It's been taking this little pin and sliding it through so it can't come out on you. Get it even on both sides. Oh, let's see. Uh, next we'll go ahead and put in the put the loaded chamber in the cater in. So it's gonna be this pin here. Simply just going to drop in the slide, take your spring, put it over it. Next, you have your extractor and extractor pin. Let's go ahead and take your extractor spring, put it into the hole where the extractor goes. Take your extractor now, sit it in there like that, and now you're going to push down on it with your thumb, good and tight, you have to push her down a few tries to get the pin to go all the way in, once it does it'll sit like that. 
sure your spring is still there. You might do that one last on your chamber indicator. That didn't. So next we can actually put the cover back on. So we're going to put it in from the or the front first. And zoom back out. So you want to make sure that that front metal tab goes up into the where it seats into the plastic up in there. Now you're just going to push that up in there. Locked in place, kind of snaps in. From there you can go ahead and drive your pin back through. Once you've done that, you're free to put your sights back on. Make sure you have your two little black springs with it. Get them orientated right, and then I usually just flip the side upside down. Put it in there. push down. Once they're in there they usually stay and you can drop your screw in. Make sure you get the screw started. Start hearing some clicks. That way the springs aren't going to go anywhere. And now if you want you can go ahead and put your pin back through. Go ahead and adjust your elevation. This is something you might have to do at the range. Or you can try to remember how many clicks you did or somehow measure, you know, where it was at on here. So. Good. Good idea where it was. Alright, so now we are complete. Let's put it back together. Give a few tests. Make sure everything's working correctly and we're good to go. Hope everybody enjoyed. I don't know if I've done a video since uh, we hit the thousand subscribers, but uh, I appreciate everybody that's watching the video. Got us there. Um, of course, YouTube denied uh, the monetization for me because we modify guns and whatever so oh well i did uh i have a patreon but i don't think uh once i get a maybe higher subscriber count i'll push it a little bit more i don't really have much to offer so okay that's working Test to make sure the safety works. Slide lock works. Zine is activating the slide lock. Safety's working.
working there. All right. So that was the FN57 complete disassembly. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching once again. Um, I don't know what I'll end up with next. This is I'm actually trading this off, so we'll see what we end up with, and uh, hopefully we get something good that we can make a new video on. We'll see you next time.